the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. The worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. In leadership or offered environmentally friendly policies and technology. We see, we see this time and time again from BlackRock. They do something that seems like they're moving in the right direction and said that gun manufacturers should do more to protect the lives of the American people. Said these companies about improving safety, but so far, so does its engagement with authoritarian governments. We are unknowingly given BlackRock money, self-imposed mandates to help reduce that over time. In releasing its numbers this morning, shares are down about 1.2 percent. About expectations, it's all about around that business, but uh, seems to be growing. Are you curious about generating passive income through automated trading on Bybit? I've got something interesting to share, and it's completely free. Click on the link below to follow along with my trades, and you won't even need to sit in front of your computer all day. You can also take a look at my monthly trading earnings, which I'm sharing openly, by clicking the link in the description. It's all about making financial gains at your own pace. Check it out. And for the past couple of weeks, we have been watching XRP for a potential massive breakout. But the one thing we have been waiting for, despite the very positive price action, was a big catalyst to really help it break through a very strong resistance. In this video, we're going to talk about what that catalyst might be, because we actually have a massive event right around the corner that I really do think could give XRP the momentum to actually break out of this thing and possibly go parabolic. In this video, we're going to talk about what that event is, because guys, this could be very exciting for XRP. So I want to start out this video and just quickly go over some things being said in DC Fintech Week right now. I think this is really important to pay close attention to, because at the end of the day, despite the lack of understanding by policymakers for the cryptocurrency industry, it's still really important that we get in their heads and understand what they're thinking. And I want to show you a very interesting clip of the head of the OCC actually talking about crypto. Now this guy is actually very bearish on cryptocurrency technology. But I want to show you that his logic actually has a massive flaw in it. And I'm going to break down why his bear stance is actually pretty bullish. And it's really going to let you know how far the cryptocurrency industry has come. And you're really going to start to understand that despite the fact that some people are still skeptical about crypto, some people still lack an understanding of what's actually going to be used for deep down. They're really starting to understand how transformational it could be. Listen to this. Particularly when it comes to crypto, which of course has had its own issues over the last year. We still have not gotten the formal regulation. I know that's not necessarily on your shoulders, so you should maybe go talk to Gary and a couple other people to see where they stand. But is there a solution, I guess, to the problem that I feel like crypto itself kind of created? So in my travels over the past year or so, and I talk to financial institutions, technology firms, and other regulators globally, whenever this comes up, something I have really, it's really emerged, there seem to be more and more of a divide between crypto on the one hand and tokenization of real-world assets and liabilities on the other hand. What do I mean by that? Well, with crypto, that's the usual stuff that is reported in the press, and it's what basically shot up and then crashed. That's the crypto world. It's largely retail-focused, and it tends to be driven by the hope for speculative gain. That seems to be the main kind of fuel and interest in crypto. Maybe I can make some money by investing in X, Y, or Z, a particular coin. It still remains replete with fraud, scams, and hacks, and some of the largest players remain unregulated. So the guy speaking draws a very stark comparison between tokenization efforts and cryptocurrency technology. Now, the reason he is doing this is because he's trying to say that centralized tokenization efforts by players like the big banks have a lot more promise than cryptocurrency technology. Now, I think this is so interesting because the thing he is lacking, the thing he has yet to wrap his head around, is that what he is doing is just proving the use case for cryptocurrency technology. There's going to be centralized private solutions and he sees that as being very innovative. He sees that as being game-changing and it is going to be. That is 100% going to be part of the future, but there's also going to be public tokenization. There's going to be tokenization and decentralized blockchains to create interoperability between the centralized solutions. So this guy is saying this stuff is transformational, but only the centralized stuff, only the private versions. But what he lacks or does not understand is that we are going to need ways to connect all these private centralized solutions. So by him going on this speech about saying, oh, and let's see the value in crypto, but tokenization is really interesting. He doesn't understand that there's going to be public decentralized tokenization as well as private centralized tokenization. I think this just shows that these regulators are starting to slowly wrap their heads around how transformational the technology could be. A lot of them are still skeptical about the fact that there's token trading on the market. But guys, slowly they're going to have to figure it out because this innovation is not going away. 
and the simple fact that he understands how powerful tokenization can be in a centralized form just shows that eventually they are going to come to see how much stronger and how much more important decentralized public tokenization is going to be and creating an interoperable financial system. I wanted to show you one other clip of Brian Brooks talking because I think this is one of the brightest minds who kind of bounces between DC and the cryptocurrency industry. I'd always love listening to what he says. He always has a very bullish take on what's happening in the market. I think it kind of cancels out the stuff the other speaker was saying, so listen up to this. I think the biggest risk is slow adoption. I don't think there's a risk in the underlying technology platforms. What it feels a lot like to me is, you know, the advent of smartphones or the advent of the commercial internet or even honestly, the advent of the CD player. Who's old enough to remember when you bought your first CD player for $999 and the risk was that you were the chump that was paying $999 like I did in 1985 for your first CD player. And three years later, you could buy that same CD player for $29. So there's a bit of an early adopter issue. And I think what many of us have been waiting on for five, six, or seven years at this point is, when is crypto going to have its breakout moment or this mass adoption moment? And I think Mike and I probably both believe that housing finance is as likely a candidate for that as anything else. And why? Because it's the largest market of any financial asset in the world. The U.S. housing financial market is the largest financial market in the world. So it's more likely that people will start doing that than anything else, and that will break open all of these possibilities. I will just say as an aside that there have been a couple of efforts to do this already. So when my friend Chris Giancarlo was the CEO, the board chair, or whatever he was of Common Securitization Solutions, Chris was a long time. His book is called Crypto Dad. I mean, he was the CFTC chairman and the CSS chairman, but he was a crypto guy who was very interested in the promise of public blockchains. And there was a moment when CSS and the agencies were really looking at the possibility of using blockchains as a securitization vehicle, which didn't quite get off the ground. And so it took a figure to try and launch this. So I'm going to cut it off right there. But what you'll notice is that the previous speaker, who was bearish on crypto but bullish on tokenization, and Brian Brooks are really talking about the same exact thing. Tokenization. The only difference is that Brian Brooks understands that there's going to be private, centralized versions of it and public, decentralized open versions of it. And all these different protocols are going to have different silos. Some are going to have private sections for them. Some are going to have centralized sections, but all those walled gardens and all those centralized repositories of value are going to have to connect to one another in a decentralized open way so the public can interact with them. This is where the public blockchains come into play. And that's why the previous speaker just wasn't seeing the full picture. Brian Brooks sees it. A lot of extremely smart people see it, just like me and you. And I just thought this was kind of interesting to tag on there. I'd never seen this before. It actually turns out that the CEO of one of the largest banks in Japan, SBI Bank, actually thinks that XRP could potentially be the number one cryptocurrency in the world one day. Just kind of showing there are very smart people who disagree with this idea. It's only going to be centralized blockchains. It's only going to be private systems. More smart people than I actually think it's going to come down to the crypto assets we see today, the public blockchains that are flourishing and building in the background. The centralized solutions will no doubt play a part, but we are going to need open, decentralized protocols to link all these things together. So now I want to move on and quickly talk about the XRP price chart right now and what could cause the breakout, because like I have been saying, we've been stuck in this trading range for a very long time, but it kind of seemed like whenever we came to the top of this thing, we really didn't have any momentum. We really didn't have enough positive catalysts to break us to the upside and really go parabolic. Now what's interesting about this chart is that I know it's hard to see, and I know this line doesn't look like it's going very high, but this line is already going to $3 to $5. So just understand on these logarithmic charts that despite the fact that these moves right here might not look massive, this is a huge exponential run right now. And that thing, in my opinion, that could finally give XRP the momentum to break out on top of this thing would be an announcement at Swell. Now Swell is going to be going on today and tomorrow. It's Ripple's conference talking about how they are changing the financial system using XRP as well as their centralized solutions. And now that XRP finally has clarity about not being a security, I have a feeling we could see some big announcements. My hope is that financial institutions that have signed NDAs with Ripple financial institutions and large governments that have been kind of scared to announce they have been working with the XRP ledger because of the regulatory limbo will be more comfortable coming out and saying, hey, this is what we've been doing behind the scenes. And now that we have the regulatory clarity for it to succeed, we are ready to launch in full effect. 
Ultimately, I think if we get a massive announcement at Swell, it could be extremely beneficial in giving XRP the positive price momentum it needs to really break out. I think it's been clear over the past couple of days that we are back in a bull market. Liquidity is flooding back into this ecosystem. We see projects all over popping off and all of these projects have really moved well off their lows. It seems like to me the market is just waiting for something big. It's waiting for something to get people excited. Institutional investors are waiting for a sign that this market is ready for prime time, ready for liquidity to flow back in. If we have a massive announcement at Swell, some massive corporation, some massive institution, or some massive government adopting the XRP ledger for its full intended use case, guys, I have a feeling that could be the thing to finally make XRP break out to the upside. And once that happens, we all know how fast XRP can move. Like I said, this small looking move right here is already at $4 to $5. I don't think there's any telling just how high XRP could go. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much.